Hey, what's up guys? So the other night I was out to dinner, I noticed that they were using LED candles instead of regular candles, and they were trying to simulate the flicker of a candle by flickering the LED. But the pattern started to repeat itself, and I noticed this, and it was driving me crazy. So I started to think, how would I design a simulated LED candle? So let me show you what I came up with. Okay, so here's what we've got. Uh, a little LED with a uh, piece of little plastic diffuser and um, the entire circuit, which I'll describe in a second. But I thought one thing would be cool with this, and eventually I'll put this on a board, would be to put this in a mason jar and have the, uh, the glass frosted so that that kind of acts as a diffuser and then have it solar powered with a battery so that it charges the battery during the day and then automatically turns on at night. So it's kind of like a cool like uh, candle yard light. And uh, so let me show you how it works when it automatically turns it off with the solar panel. And that'll give you a, a better shot of what it looks like. So you can see that the LED sort of turns off and then turns back on when it gets dark. So you can see the battery over here, the battery charger, the solar panels here, the uh, simulated candle circuitry right there, and then of course the LED. And it does give a nice broadband flat noise, noise random signal into this. So, and we'll go through what, what exactly I'm doing here to create that pure random signal to drive that LED to give that nice natural flicker. So let's go to the whiteboard and explain the uh, the circuit. Okay, so here's the circuit and uh, we'll go through it uh, step by step here. Uh, at the top we have the solar panel, the battery charger, and the battery here. And then this P-channel FET is responsible for turning power on and off to the circuit. So that's how it detects if the sun's out or when it's uh, getting dark out and it automatically kicks this thing on and starts flickering the LED. Um, I'll put links in the description below for all of these part numbers. So basically starting at the top here, the battery charger here, TP4056, gets its input power right from the solar, power, solar panel, which is at 5 volts. I think it's maybe 100 milliamps. Um, but I think it charges roughly around 20 milliamps normally. That's what I measured it at today. So the output of the TP4056 goes right to the battery and that handles the battery charging. We're monitoring one leg here of the solar panel and that's what kicks on this P-channel FET. So as soon as this, this gate here falls below the threshold, which is when it gets dark out, It'll pull this low and kick on this P-channel MOSFET here, and then we have VCC, which is connected to everything else on the, the board. So um, our clock, notice there's no microcontroller here. We're doing this all with just discrete components, okay? It would be pretty easy to do this with a microcontroller, but eh, I thought it'd be funner to just, you know, build it out of parts I had laying around here. And uh, your values will change because if you're not using the exact parts here, the frequencies and things like that could actually uh, change. And I'll explain a little bit more uh, of that as we go along here. So for the clock, we've got a CD4049. If you're using like a 74HC or 74HCT, these values will change. And this is a very simple way to generate a clock. You could use a 555 timer. I just didn't have one laying around, so I went with this little RC uh, inverter clock. So we're using three inverters here to generate our clock. We're using 100K, 100K, and then 3.1 microfarad capacitors to give us about a 15 hertz clock. If you're using a 74HC4049, then these values will change because the the rate here depends on those thresholds and the speed of these, these inverters. So anyway, you can kind of play around with those on the breadboard and find a good frequency that works. When I make the board for this, I'm gonna put potentiometers here so you can kind of fine tune the frequency you want. Uh, so that generates our clock. And then we also have a latch signal because the the way we're generating the random number is feeding these two shift registers here 
um, but we want them to just run right through. And uh, this is called a linear feedback shift register. And if you Google that, you'll see that that's a pretty common way to generate random numbers. And uh, it does repeat, so it is pseudo random, but it repeats once every, you know, forever. I mean, it's not nothing noticeable you would see with the flickering candle. So, and that all depends on where you, you get your taps in at. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. So we got our clock and then our latch signal is what latches the, the internal bits of the shift registers to the outputs. And we want that to happen automatically. So if you watch my shift register uh, videos, you'll notice that you know we've got the clock signal and then we've got the latch signal. So we clock the data through the shift register and then latch it to the output. Well, we want that to happen automatically. So we've got a little RC circuit here with a 10K and 2.1 microfarad capacitors to ground there so that the signal kind of looks like this. This is our clock and then this is our latch here so that it first clocks the data through the shift register and then the, la the latch signal is kind of trailing behind and then boom, latches it up automatically. So we've got these two shift registers here and these are the uh, 74HC595 shift registers. And so you can see here, we've got the latch signal and the clock signals, uh, and these both are connected to each other to these signals here. So, and this is a pretty basic setup for these shift registers. Um, VCC is this VCC. Uh, the enable lines are tied to ground. Uh, the clear lines are tied up high to VCC. We're not using those. And uh, the way this works is, so on boot up, you know, there's whatever the internal bits are, you know, we don't care about. We're not seeding this with anything. And it, it just boots up with some random garbage in the shift registers. And then the clock line is just flying. So it'll start shifting those bits through this shift register out into this one and then out. And then you can see that the output here of pin seven, so bit seven is ORed with bit zero of the first one. And then we invert that with this same inverter and that feeds the input here. And that gives us a really nice random bit string. And that, that just continues on for pretty much forever or for anything that we would notice with the LED. And the reason I have this inverter in here is that if it booted up with all zeros, this thing would just hang. And I tried a few different things like uh, like when we first boot up, like I had an OR with this input here with some other data or, or with, uh, I was just tying it high with a little RC circuit. So then as it would boot up, it would load it all up with ones and then it would be off running on its own. But I figured that if I just invert this, when it does boot up, with all zeros, it just gets inverted anyway. And then that loads a one in there and then it just runs. So you'll notice that here that I have zero, one, and two in red, and those are what drive the LED signals. So over here's the LED, the circuit here in blue. And we've got a yellow LED with the anode tied up to VCC. It's cathode tied to ground with two 1K ohm resistors in parallel to ground. So just always sitting there, it'll be on with two 1K ohms in parallel. And then we have three transistors. I didn't, didn't have enough room to draw them all here, but we have three transistors that are pulling in resistors to ground. And the way we're doing that is just using a standard NPN transistor, a 2N3904. So with an output of this shift register to, to the gate here of the, uh, or to the base, sorry, of this NPN, with a 10K ohm resistor and a 100 microfarad to ground here. And the reason we're doing that is to give it sort of a sloshy effect with turning the LED on. So it's not like a flicker. I don't really want a strobe light effect. I want it to kind of move in and out of the light. And, and when, you, when, you see the, uh, when you saw the demo there on the, the bench, it probably wasn't very clear, but it does give you that really na nice, natural, sloshy effect. And so one of these, zero is pulling in a 1K, so it makes it brighter. One is actually pulling in two 1Ks in parallel with this same exact circuit, so it gets even brighter. And then two is pulling in just 1K. So the idea here is that we have three transists, three of these circuits kind of staging it, so it goes, you know, it's kind of ramping up the brightness. So as a one might move through here, you know, one, zero, 
So kind of as it's moving from zero, one, two, three, four, we're trying to get that nice sort of brightness increase, but like kind of roll it so it's not just all at once. And that's the idea here with this this circuit. But anyway, this was just kind of a fun project just to just to whip up here uh, on a lazy Sunday. So uh, I'm curious to know what you guys would come up with to make a very random, pure, simulated LED candle. So let me know in the comments below on what you guys think uh, think would be a better way. And uh, in the future, look for uh, me actually making this into a board. And obviously, I won't. You know, I'll, I'll I'll fix this up a little bit, make it a little bit more efficient or more elegant. And I'll make a board, I'll put it in a mason jar, and uh, look for that video. So that's it. Thanks for watching.